back with another episode. We're back with another episode of Barrett Sass. And how are you guys doing? I hope you guys had an amazing last week and you're definitely gonna have an amazing this week because you know I always tell you you're gonna have an amazing week. So you're you're having amazing weeks every time you listen to Brick Sass. And with that being said, make sure you subscribe. Just hit it right now. I'm gonna give you a little time, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I know you subscribe. Make sure you leave a comment after you watch the video. Hit the like button, do all those beautiful things. And if you are streaming, make sure you give me five stars and leave a review. Cause like, why not? So yes, how was you guys week? My week was good, whatever. I went out to eat with my friend Jamil. We went to this place called Mama Sushi in the Bronx. And I had sushi, I had to have sushi and so, long yo and mama sushi has an array of sushi like fun sushi like not just your average sushi like it was so good it was so good and then i had some noodles then i had my dumplings because i told you i love asian dumplings so yeah we went out to eat so there's anything else this week i had an interesting week like personally <laughs> oh as you guys can see i have on glasses and these are dead ass medicated glasses Unannounced to people, my eyes low key hockey fucked up. Only one of my eyes is fucked up, but I actually have keratoconus. I wear contacts, but my contacts begin on my nerves sometimes. I have these, I don't know if y'all, oh my gosh, here we go. Let's go, Med medication Brittany, um, Dr. Brittany, bitch. So I have keratoconus, something where your pupil is coning out, or whatever the case may be, which is cool. Well, it's not cool, but hey, whatever. So I was prescribed RPG lenses, they're hard contact lenses. <sighs> okay. I love hard lenses. So if there's any of you, because you don't have to have keratoconus or your hard lenses. Um, if you ever want to get hard lenses, vice versa, soft lenses, it, it's, it takes a lot to get adjusted to. But one thing I say about them lenses, your vision is sparkling clear. Like with those lenses, like literally this eye, my eye is like really, really bad. It's like, it's like a lazy eye. Like it's like completely blurry. This eye is really, really good. But, um, I could see perfect out this eye with those lenses on like perfect like I don't think y'all understand how amazing that is because even with like glasses contacts anything I cannot see perfect it could be the, the the eye doctor that I have now I don't know I'm not sure but I'll tell you one thing numb lenses it, it, it's like you see HD clear not even HD fuck a HD 4k 8k type shit I'm not capping but I put on my glasses today because I'm not in the mood to wear my contacts I don't wear my glasses every day. I don't wear my glasses every day. But my eyes been getting kind of my nerves. So I just got my glasses on today. So I hope y'all like them. Um, my husband, he's an asshole. He told me that I look, I look like a um, serial killer. I it reminds, <laughs> it reminds me of Dwight from The Office. So I kind of like them. I think it's cute. But yeah, whatever. I picked these out because I'm going to keep it 100 with y'all. I'm on Medicaid. <laughs> I've been keeping it too motherfucking real on this podcast. So, y'all know with Medicaid, you only can pick from a select few of glasses. And I have a very round face. So, like, smaller glasses don't look good on my face. And this was, like, the only wide frame they had. I'm going to give me some new glasses this year, too. Because you get could get a pair of glasses every year. I just got to go to a, um... I'm going to find me a spot. But I'm going to go to my spot. But my spot is in Harlem. Oh, my... It's glasses Britney for me. It's glasses Britney, Britney for me. So, yeah. I've been taking my, like my health seriously i've been taking my health seriously ever since everything that happened so the eyes was one of them and i was like oh let me just wear my glasses on the pod like why i gotta only wear my glasses when i'm editing my pod you feel me so i hope you like it i think glasses are fun sometimes i'm not gonna be wearing it every week though bitch but it's one of this week these are one of my many glasses uh so yeah but um yeah, that was my week. I don't, I don't think that's it. Oh, I went to see my cousins. That was fun. It'd be crazy. You know how that go, bitch. Um, and that was it. Nothing unique. Nothing crazy. I think this week for me is definitely going to be like a, just a clean up week. Like, I'm just over here. I'm phys physically looking at the hamper. Like, I, because y'all know I film in my bedroom. This is a bed that I'm sitting on. And I see the hamper and I'm just like, that has to get done. That has to get done. It has to. It's the laundry for me. So, I'm going to definitely be a very active week. I need to go to the park and stuff. You know, do my jogs. Well, my walks. My power walks and shit. So, it's just probably going to be a really productive week. I don't think I have anything to do this week, though. 
Do I have anything to do towards the end of the week? I don't think so. If I forget anything, let me know, let me know. But anyway, what's going on in the media? So one of the top things I wanted to talk about was the Naomi Osaka. Osaka if I'm saying her name wrong, I'm so sorry. Um, and how she left the French Open because of her mental health. So, all right, let me tell y'all my, my steps. Because, you know, I always come to steps. So, the first thing was when she said she didn't want to speak at the, um, the, with the press. And she took the $15,000 fine. And when I first heard that, I was like, that's suspicious. Like, especially because she won. So, I was like, that's weird that, you know, she don't, she's saying it's because of her mental health. And she don't want to talk. I felt like. Oh no, she was saying it because they ask questions that are like that try to mess with their mental health and like try to come for their what's that word when you're like a really good athlete? They're good athleteism. <laughs> I just made that up, but like kind of just like come for them. Like it 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 fucks with your brain. It it, it plays with your head or whatever the case may be. But then I was like, mm, uh, like. I feel like this, like Naomi Osaka is, is that girl right now. Like when it comes to tennis, she's that girl. Like even uh, you can even say sports, like because you know how it was always those one it guy or girl, like LeBron James, you know, Michael Jordan, even Shaquille O'Neal, Kobe Bryant. You know, it's like sometimes it's that one athlete, like uh, oh, what's his name, Beckham. I forgot his full name. Like certain athletes, they're just like the bell of our eyes. Serena Williams, Venus Williams, they're like, they're just in our heads, you know what I'm saying? Um, and Naomi Osaka is one of them. Like, if you, even if you don't watch sports, or Simone Biles, I don't watch motherfucking people do flips and stuff. I don't watch that sport. I don't watch it. I don't. But I know her. I know Naomi Osaka. I know David Beckham. Like, a certain athletes that just. They just so good that they have to tell the world. Like, the world has to know. And she's one of those. So, my thing is, is like, even I understand how mental health works. I'm very aware of it. <laughs> but, um, I just felt like she's that girl right now. So, why would an uh, interviewer ever, ever make her feel unconfident in how she could play the next day, tomorrow, next year, next week. You get what I'm saying? And you beat Serena Williams. Like, if, if, if I beat Serena Williams, if, if I do that, can't nobody really bring me down? Like, let's be serious. Like, I can't. Nobody can't bring me down. Like, it's a wrap. Like, I really think I'm that girl. Like, I'm really stuck up now. Like, I'm really that tennis player. Like, respectfully. But, um... And then I see her doing these ads. She got this thing with Sweet Green where she got her own salad bowl. Like, I seen, like, big ads, the Naomi Osaka bowl. And I'm just, like, I'm thinking in my head, like, girl, you, you just didn't want to do the damn interview. Something else going on. Then when I heard that she completely dead at the French Open, I was like, something is up. I think something is up. I'm going to be honest. I know some of y'all like, no, she might just have mental health issues. I think, I don't know. I don't trust it. Like, she just left the whole French open. But then I heard another perspective, too, where somebody was like, they're happy that she left the French open because it just goes to show. Because since she is that girl, um, it lets people know, like, bitch, I don't need y'all. Y'all need me. Because she's that girl right now. So if the it girl leaves the fucking open, it's like, Fuck, we lost Naomi Osaka or whatever. So I hope that she did do it in that retrospect. If she did it on that type of time, like I'm that girl, then that's different. Now I'm here. I'm 100% here for her. I'm here for that. Like I told y'all, I'm not doing no motherfucking interviews. And that's that. And they probably said, well, the more you don't do it, we'll find you. And she said, okay, and I'm not doing it at all. If it was that type of time, I'm 100% here for that. Um, so I don't know if she was on some, I told y'all I'm not doing interviews, bitch. And I'm here for that. So, you know, I'm supportive. I support her. Just a little, little bit of me is skeptical. And that's fine. You know what I'm saying? Then y'all already know what the fuck else I'm going to talk about today, bitch. Y'all already know. Y'all already know. Y'all already know. Not Monique. Because I love Monique. And we talking about Monique because Monique said that people can't be wearing their bonnets and their PJs and their slippers at the damn airport. 
I love Monique. When she wanted to be in Netflix, I was here for it. I didn't be in it. You know, I'm not perfect. But I did feel like she deserved way more than five hundred thousand dollars. Like, don't ever fucking disrespect Monique. Monique is definitely a queen of comedy. Like when you think even female comedy, not just black female comedy, you think Monique. Like Monique is just Monique. Like like I fuck with Monique. But that's no. Like we can't get jiggy with that. And let's let's get into that. Because look, man, y'all know when I start doing all the movements and shit. My thing with that was Okay, even if you feel like, oh, when girls wear bonnets and sweatpants and pajamas and, and um slippers to the fucking airport is ghetto. This is my thing. Like, I don't even wear bonnets and um scarves to the supermarket, to the airport, none of that. And my reason is the opposite. My reason is simply, bitch, I'm not sleeking my edges for y'all motherfuckers. I'm not tying down my hair. When you tie down your hair, you're tying down your hair because you feel like your hair's fucked up or whatever the case may be. I usually wear box braids all the time, so the most you're going to see is a frizzy hair or my edges is peasy as fuck. I don't give a fuck. Like, if I'm going to the fucking airport, yo, number one, I'm tall. Like, I remember the worst, like, my longest flight I ever took was to LA and Vegas. Those are like five hour, six hour flights. So, for me, I have never even flown longer than that because I think of my flight to LA and Vegas. And I'm just like, fuck. Like, flying on a plane is mad uncomfortable. Like, just I think even even when you're not tall, it's just like you just sitting in this little seat. You don't know who you're gonna sit next to. I remember one time I was sitting to like this, this he was like bigger. It was on Vegas and he was just like taking up mad space. Then I ain't had no space on the plane. What? Who did I think I flew with Virgin? Virgin was not serving the girls. It's a very nice looking plane inside, but the seats are very no leg room. Like I need, I, like I'm about to start paying for extra leg room. I think I never paid for extra leg room because you know you usually want to sit next to your friends and shit. And I feel like my friends is not about to be like paying for extra leg room seats. But I'm about to be in that type of time because I'm dead at six feet and I need extra leg room. And if people be kicking your chair and shit, like the plane is not comfortable. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. And even we could talk about going to the supermarket or Target. When I go to the supermarket, I'm buying groceries. When I go to Target, I'm buying detergent. I'm buying fucking dishwashing liquid. Why do I have to get dressed up for that? Like, respectfully. Like, why do I have to, like, why I can't wear a bonnet there? Do you need, like, what do you need from me? Is this a job interview? Like, come on, stop with this. Like, and I'm even on the point where... I ain't gonna front. Even when I walk out the house and I look fucking crazy and I know I'm going to Target or something, I be like, motherfuckers think I'm gonna steal today, but it is what it is. Like, bitch, just who the fuck I am. I shouldn't have to wear a button down to go to Target just so that niggas won't follow me in a store or be watching me on the camera or be prejudging me because this is fucking Target. Like, this is not, this is not a special place. Like, literally, we're here to get fucking bullshit. Literally, every time you go to Target, Walmart, Kmart, wherever the fuck you go to get your bullshit, you go in there to get bullshit. You're not going there to do anything unique. This is not the fucking Met Gala. Like, what are we talking about right now? And it's just like, with black women, they just expect us, and I think black, even black men, they want us to look nice everywhere we fucking go. Just so that y'all motherfuckers feel comfortable, or y'all don't feel like we about to steal or do something fucking crazy. And it's just like, I'm not doing that. I'm not. I'm not getting dressed up for the fucking airport. The most I do for the airport, if I want to look cute, is I put on like a sundress or a maxi dress. And maxi dresses are mad comfortable to me. So that's just cheating when I do that. I put on some like sandals, some cute sandals. That's cheating. I'm just cheating. I'm just looking cute, comfy. That's all I'm doing. I'm like, I'm gonna be cute and comfortable. Or if I'm going somewhere hot, I'm gonna be like, okay, once I get out, I'm gonna be warm. I'm gonna feel good. I'm gonna be that girl. Blah blah blah. Cause you know you don't wanna wear sweats, and then once you get off the plane, now you in fucking 90 degree weather in Mexico with sweats on. So you know, the maxi dress covers your ankles. So I'm giving y'all tips. I'm giving y'all tips. Or oh, whatever. But for her to be like, we queens, like girl, like what does like stop? Damn. You want me to get dressed up for the airplane? Like, I already done made it here. I got through TSA. I just want to go on vacation. I'm not a criminal. I'm just a citizen trying to travel and have fun and be just living my life. And you want me to get dogged up for the shit. Truthfully speaking, even when I see people mad dressed up 
at the airport, I'm thinking like maybe they go into the club as soon as they get there. I'm thinking maybe they got an interview or something like when I see people dressed up for the airport, I'm just thinking like who are you trying to impress? Like, really? Like you comfy like that? Like when I see people with jeans on, I get teary eyed. You wearing jeans on the plane? No. No. No, 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 no. We're not gonna do that. I'm not doing that. No. Uh uh. audacity for me and that's one thing motherfuckers gonna have is audacity bitch shit like I mean and why are black women constantly the topic of discussion like leave us the fuck alone like everything we do people gotta talk about oh black women wear their nails too long oh black women we wear eyelashes y'all need to stop wearing them eyelashes dark skin girls can't wear blonde hair oh box braids are not good for parties oh braids are unprofessional oh your natural hair is messy oh blah, blah, blah. leave me the fuck alone like why why am i always the topic of discussion why why like why can't we just we don't be bothering no motherfucking body niggas just be dressed up niggas be having their wigs on niggas be wearing their natural hair niggas be wearing their fucking box braids bonnet scarves and somebody gonna have something to say like why why does it matter we're not as long as we're not bothering you why does it matter that's my question is like why does it matter like a lot of the times, even me, when I'm gonna, I, I realize how crazy and silly I sound. Like, you sound crazy telling somebody they can't wear a bonnet to the airport. If you really logically think about it, because why? You're saying because you're supposed to represent yourself as a queen. Why do I have to represent myself as a fucking queen? Bitch, you want me to look like a fucking queen, a fucking Sheba at the fucking airport? Like, you want me to look like, remember the shit that, um... The fucking that Beyonce was wearing on that performance at the Grammys. Like, you want me to wear a fucking crown on my fucking head at the airport? Like, I'm not doing that shit, boy. Like, what if I'm on a plane for 10 hours? You want me to wear my crown on the plane for 10 hours? I could wear my crown, but I'm gonna wear my sweats with my crown. Like, I can't. Like, I can't. I'm a queen whether I'm in sweats, whether I'm in leggings, whether I'm in a bonnet, whether I'm in a scarf, whether I'm in furry slippers, whether I'm in my pajamas. Like, y'all be wanting too much from the black woman, like, for real. Because it's like, okay, when we wear wigs, the lace fronts, oh, y'all lace fronts be lifting up, we be seeing the glue. Then when we want to wear our natural hair, it's just like, oh, your natural hair is mad, bogus looking, it's not professional, you're not going to get a fucking job, fuck you. Uh, and I go for braids, I go for locks, all that shit that we be wearing, that's on the natural uh what they call that 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 urban no nah, i don't i hate the word urban but that aesthetic you know what i'm saying it's oh it's unprofessional and then some of the black men be like y'all don't even want to date us because bitch i don't date bitches with natural hair bitch you shit look crazy and i date you then if you get a relaxer i mean relaxers are acceptable but then your hair being fucked up and shit. But you could grow long hair with um relaxed hair. And it's just like, what do you want from me? Why, why, why do you care? Like, a lot of times when we say stuff, we need to really ask ourselves, like, why do we care? Like, why do I actually give a fuck that she has on a bonnet and leggings and furry slippers? Why? Why do I care? As long as this person is not doing anything to me, why should I care? What does that have to do with me? Nothing. It doesn't. It doesn't do anything for me. It doesn't. You know? And it's just like, we just be wanting to be us. We just be trying to thrive. We just be trying to be great. And it's just like, people just be constantly coming for us. Like, constantly. Like, constantly. And then, all the shit that people used to judge us about is what's on trend. The big earrings, the long nails, the long lashes. You see Kylie Jenner wearing it. Big lips, glossy lips. Remember wearing too much lip gloss? It's like, oh, she sucked dick. Like, she probably do. And the fuck? Like, it's just too much. It's too much. It's too much on us. That's why I just do me. Like, when I be going outside... I, even I wear a scarf. I don't wear a scarf outside, but I wear a scarf in my car. And I remember these be like, "You just gonna go outside like that?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'm not taking off my scarf until I get to my destination. I want my edges to be laid for my destination. I don't need my edges laid in my car." 
Like, I'm not doing that. Like, I don't know who you want me to press. Like, when I used to live with my parents, that's why I couldn't live with my parents. They used to, like, well, not my mother so much. My father really cared about, like, what the neighbors and them thought. And I'm just thinking, like, do these niggas pay your mortgage? Do any of them want to fight me? Like, I'm just confused. Like, I can't impress these people on y'all block. I don't even know these niggas. Like, respectfully, like, I don't give it up like that. That's definitely a generational thing. My father is, like, 60-something, so that is of his generation. Like, Monique is of his generation. Like, they feel like they got to impress motherfuckers that don't deadass give a fuck about them. They, they act like they give a fuck about how you look, but they would never hang with you. They would never fuck with you type shit. So it was just like, what are we even doing right now? But, um, for me, I, I, I just, I just can't, I can't, I can't, I just can't. And I, w I was so disappointed that Monique would say something like that. And then for her to come up there with the robe on and say it, it's just like, girl, one could say, why would you come on the fucking internet with a robe on and a one fucking big ass braid? Like, stop. Like, for real, for real. Like, y'all, y'all be wanting way too much of us, like way too much of the black women that's why i don't pay half the shit no mind i swear to god i don't be sleeping my edges sometimes i be going out i don't give a fuck because at the end of the day i'm going to run errands sometimes yeah i do go to the supermarket though or target and look cute it's depending on my mood like i do what i want like respectfully like i just do what i want like because maybe you see sometimes for the week i haven't done anything so i'm like oh this week I'm going food shopping. I'll put on an outfit that makes sense. I'll pull up, pull an outfit together that makes sense and looks kind of cute and go to the supermarket and that. You know what I'm saying? Or I'll go to Target and that because I'm like, this is the only time I'm going out this week and I want to just feel kind of cute. You know what I'm saying? So I just put something on cute and I go to Target and that's cool. But it'll be other days where I'll be like, today ain't the motherfucking day. And that's fair. And it's just like, why are we being bullied and bothered into being cute at Target? Or at the fucking airport. The airport, though, I can't relate because I, I'm, I'm saying I can't relate in terms of, like, caring because I'm, I just know how uncomfortable flights are. Like, I've never flown first class or anything like that. Like, I can't, I can't even imagine. And then... You, sometimes when you catch those early flights, you imagine me get dressed up for morning. Stop. Stop for real. Y'all need to stop. Like, y'all need to stop. Y'all need to stop. Stop. Like, for real. For real. Like, as long as nobody's bothering you, people could wear whatever they want. It's not upsetting anyone. You're not doing anything crazy. Mind your motherfucking business. We should not be commenting on how people go to any occasion. We shouldn't. That's just that. Like, I don't know. That's y'all. Y'all want to be go and be fucking idiotos? Go listen to Moni. Go do what you want. We got to dress like we going to the fucking Met Gala every five weeks. I feel like whether you got a bonnet on, whether you got a scarf on, whether you got your wig on, whether you, if you a queen, you a queen. Like, if you a good person, you a good person. It don't matter what you wearing, what you got on. And I think, too, people, some people agree with Monique and they, like, look at the bigger picture and it's like, black people trying to do this and we trying to thrive. And, and it's just like, by y'all doing that, it's not normalizing respecting black people and our boundaries. That's my opinion. Like, you're not normalizing that you're 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 creating you're advertising the idea of white people kind of controlling who we are and what we do because if a white person was to go outside with a bonnet we kind of wouldn't give a fuck we probably would think it's funny because we own the bonnet now like black people literally own bonnets like that's our thing so we probably be tight like why this bitch got on a bonnet but for the most part she wouldn't be judged as ghetto she would be judged as now white people wear bonnets like as soon as a white person do it it's fashionable it's trendy it's sleek it's hot it's whoa and then when we do it it's ghetto and it's problematic and we not being the queens that we should be and it's just like no and that's why i don't believe in like us having to constantly look good because i think that us feeling like we have to constantly and and when i say look good i mean like always be dressed up we're kind of feeding the white narrative like we have to impress white people meanwhile they don't always look good they have their days where they're relaxed and no one gives a fuck 
So, yeah, I'm not doing that. I'm sorry, Monique. Well, I'm not sorry, but I'm just saying, like, girl. Girl. Stop. Like, for real. Like, respectfully. And I just got a bonnet, too, the other day for the first time. <laughs> Actually, just before she said that shit, I got a bonnet. I had got the bonnet that ties up because I'm still a scarf girl. And actually, I don't like that bonnet. That bonnet is, does not stay on my head at all. I understand that bonnets don't stay on your head, but like that one does stay on my head at all. So I'm sticking to my scars. Period. But that's, that's that on that. <laughs> so... What will we be what will we be talking about today? And we're going to be talking about I guess friendships, boundaries, ending friendships, like that type of thing. I don't really know. It don't really matter for me no more how I like phrase the topics cuz the name of the episodes is usually something crazy I say in the episode. But yeah, we're going to be talking about friendships, bitch, and just thriving in them and working them out and figuring them out cuz yeah. I say yeah. <laughs> it was okay. So how do I bring up this topic? Obviously, a lot of times when I bring up some topics, it relates to my life, and it definitely is uh, correlates to my life right now. Um, and I've just been through things in friendships often, you know. And I'm gonna say, and should I make it friendships? Yeah, and like I guess no, family is different. So let's keep. I'm gonna try to keep it very friendshipy. Because I consider my family like my friends too, but my family. But my family, obviously, I'm going to treat differently than my friends. And that's just that on that. Because my family can't go nowhere. Friends, you could get rid of them. Your family, you can't. So, whatever. But, um, yeah, I've been through things in friendships, you know. And, of course, when you get older too, you gain... Well, you can either gain friends. A lot of us don't gain much more friends as we get older. Or, but a lot of us can lose them. You know, you lose a lot of friends along the way. You go to, what... Uh, Pre-K, kindergarten, well, uh, elementary. We call it elementary school. I know some people call it different, but that elementary is in uh, New York City is kindergarten to um, fifth or sixth grade. And then middle school is only seventh and eighth grade. And then high school is ninth to twelfth grade. But I know some people call it different things like secondary school and all that other stuff. We call it elementary or elementary, however y'all say it. I call it elementary school friends. Then you have your middle school friends. Then you have your high school friends. And then you have your college friends. And, you know, everybody don't stick around. Everybody doesn't stick around. And it's for a variety of reasons. And um, friendships are beautiful, though, you know. I love having friends. Um, I think I read something statistically like uh, people... People with friends, like actual friendships, are generally happier than people who don't have um, f uh, friendships or whatever the case may be. Um, I enjoy having friends, even though I feel like I could be a shitty friend. I feel like sometimes my friends could be shitty friends too. I don't feel like I'm, a, I'm always the perfect friend. And we'll talk more about that, about why sometimes people suck as friends or whatever the case may be. Not because I do like mean things to people or whatever the case may be. I just don't feel like, uh, but that's lately. I hope people get it and understand why. I just don't feel like I'm old I, lately, but with reason, you know, I'm not as uh, available as I used to be or I'm not always there enough. Uh, I don't feel like I give the best advice lately, but these, you know, I'm saying it now, but I know it's all within reason, but I still feel bad sometimes about it. Um, and I just feel like in general, I haven't always been the best friend. Like, and that's the good thing about me. I feel like I can admit to these things. I'm learning a lot of times, a lot of people don't be admitting to their faults. You know what I'm saying? And I don't like that shit. For real. Um, and so yeah, I want to talk about friendship. All right, so um, and I guess boundaries and just being a good friend. So I just found the article uh, article on Allure.com called "The Importance of Creating Communication Boundaries with Friends Right Now." And I guess it was because it was during the pandemic. It was this article was written August third, twenty twenty, but I felt like it could relate in general. And it was written by Mary Retta. Whether you're in a complete isolation, oh. Before uh, before most topics, what do we like to do? We like to expand our minds. 
Expand your mind, expand your mind, expand your mind. So, <laughs> on an article on Allure.com written, um, titled The Importance of Creating Communication Boundaries with Friends Right Now, written by Mary Retta, states, whether you're in complete isolation mode or occasionally going on social distance picnics with friends, communication with loved ones can feel tricky right now. You may have trouble telling a friend you don't feel comfortable going to their house or you might not be up to FaceTiming your family as much as you were at the beginning of the pandemic. Because of this, it's increasingly important right now to set up boundaries around communication with friends. We all have different ways of responding to what is happening around us and how we navigate through the challenging time. A licensed clinical social worker and therapist tells Allure, some of us crave connection with others in an effort to lessen our feelings of isolation, while others withdraw from social interaction as a way to preserve themselves. Boundary setting allows you to communicate the levels of social engagement that will feel supportive and uplifting during this time rather than overwhelming or depleting. Adjusting to socializing differently can feel mentally and emotionally exhausting, especially if you are not on the same page as your loved ones. If you are feeling like you don't have the capacity to communicate with your friends or like you are tapped out of talking about a particular subject, it's important to recognize that boundary and, com boundary and communicate clearly and intentionally. Wow. So, I know, you know, during the pandemic and after the pandemic, a lot of us kind of had to, like, fall in love with ourselves, right? Like, so you kind of, like, made routines and things where you kind of, like, deal with just you. And you kind of enjoyed it or you kind of got used to it or you kind of realized, like, ugh. Or you might have realized too, like, damn, I got a lot of shit on my head and in my mind, in my mind that kind of requires me to pay a lot more attention to myself. And I may not be able to constantly be on the phone or constantly be going to people's house or constantly be, I don't fucking know, going out, whatever you hell you do, going to these picnics, bitches and brunches and all that shit. Like, you realize, like, fuck, I actually need this in me time and um you might not be the best of friend right now you know what i'm saying and i want to just talk about uh just being in sticky situations toxic friendships and all that stuff so i definitely can relate you know i had many friends some friends you just lose because of time like some people just in your life because of season like my friends in middle school i'm not even friends with no more i don't think i have any middle school friends no elementary definitely not like i can't even barely remember people's name from elementary school um of course we follow them on instagram facebook and all that stuff but like close no high school of course um and college definitely because you know it's the recency effect those are the people you knew most recently um i am 29 i feel like a lot of us can relate you know that's on here that your friendships are not as strong as they used to be even too because we're at an age too where now we're starting families and we're when we're dating we're dating so you might be dating a guy and um it's becoming really serious so now you want to give all your attention to him and i want to talk about that like too you got that type of friend too that, that like they just can't accept that you're in a relationship and you're up under your nigga first of all nobody's choosing their nigga over you or their man. Let me be respectful. Nobody's choosing their man over you. What do you do to get a relationship? I know me. My thing with my husband. When I said I was ready to, to find a man. Was I was looking for consistency. I'm not about to date nobody. That's willing to dead me for his friends. In the beginning. Like all the time. Like every time we're supposed to go out. Let's say we're supposed to go out Friday. And his friends say. Oh we want to go to da da da. You going to dead our shit to go hang with your friends? Do you really like me then? Like, if you want to really build a relationship, if you really like somebody, in those beginning stages, you need to be front and center. Like, you do. And then after a while, when the fucking honeymoon phase go away, then you can start being like, all right, bye, babe. Like, I'm going to hang out my friends. Peace. Like, you know, everybody do that. Like, in the beginning, you trying to show 
your best self. Like, you trying to show, this is, I'm here, this is what I do, this is how I am. You want to build a relationship. So I hate when, you know, pay attention to friends like that. That, like, when you get in a relationship, they mad you up under your man. Yes, I understand you got those friends that's always got a man. And they always choosing a man over your friendship and over you. That's completely different. Like, yes, you got to cre create a balance. Or whatever. Like, yeah, you can still hang out with your friends and hang out with your man, you know. Hang out with your man on Friday, hang out with your friend on Saturday. If you got it like that. You know what I'm saying? Yes, you can still hang out with your friends and be in a relationship. But some people, I, that to me just be like, when the, when, the, when the friendship is too clingy. Because now that I even think about it, it doesn't make sense. Like, if you if you really balancing it, then you can't say I'm not hanging out with you. Or whatever the case may be. So, some people do that. Some people don't like when you get into a relationship. Like, I felt like that happened to me. When I got into a relationship with family, like, when I got real serious, I felt like some of my friends was acting funny. People was used to me being the single friend. Always being there. Always wanting to talk on the phone. Always wanting to do this. Like, no, bitch. I want to be in, too. I want to start a family, too. Okay, like I want that too. Like I want that. Yeah, that's something I want. I don't want to be single and playing around with you all day and hear you complain about your man all fucking day. I don't. I'm not interested. You're mad. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Yep. <laughs> so it's like some of that stuff could impact your friendships and your relationships too. Of course, when people start really, really getting serious, like getting married and having kids and shit. Your friendships, mm, will they completely change? I, 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 I could say for some, I maybe not all, but sometimes yeah, they're gonna change. Th they might not be able to have a babysitter. Um, I know for me, when I finally like really, really got committed, going to the club wasn't just the same. So, am I gonna want to go to the club all the time? No, I'm not. I might want to go once in a blue, but when I used to go, I used to just not have fun. Because I'm like, I can't even bag nobody in here. Like, I could dance on you, but, like, what is it going to mean? And, like, I feel like I'm just being tantalized. <laughs> like, what are we doing? So, it's like certain stuff that used to be fun is not as fun no more when you start really settling down. It's the truth. Like, dead ass. And so, those things might fuck up your friendships. And you see what friendships are strong. You see which ones last. Because just because somebody gets married and start having kids, that doesn't mean the friendship is over. But if that's how the person want to move or how you want to move, it goes to show who was friends and who wasn't friends. You know what I'm saying? So, those are one of the things, you know, that we, we often don't think about when it comes to friendships. Is that sometimes, you know, you can... You know, not sometimes you can lose those friendships. Is that... We're all growing. We're all going to get older. We're all going to... Things are going to progress, period. Even if you... Even from high school to college, things change, right? It's so many phases we go through. And that's why we lose friends all the fucking time. Because high school, you with them for four years. Boom, boom, boom. Then y'all go to college. Y'all might not go to the same college, right? And even if you go to college with your friend... The school might be big as fuck. You go into class with different people. Your roommate might be different. You're doing dormitory. You're doing mad shit. You're meeting mad people. You might start making new friends and building new circles. And it's like... It's the same as some people can't do long distance relationships. Some people probably can't do long distance friendships. I was able to maintain some of my high school friendships even while I was in college. So, you know, it's possible. But for some people, it's not. And sometimes you outgrow people. That moment, the moment you get the chance to kind of get away from somebody in college, you like, yo, I really enjoy not being around this person. Or, yo, this person was mad toxic. Or whatever the case may be. Like, things happen. I think that's why, like, life is so funny. I think that's why they in some ways, in a weird way, that's why this elementary, middle school, high school, college, it's like a way of teaching you, like, it's a way of eliminating shit. It's like an elimination process. And, um, after college is definitely, playtime is over. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, you're gonna see who stands and who doesn't stand. Now, let's talk about toxic friendships. Let's get into it because I feel like I'm trying to avoid it. <laughs> what is a toxic friendship to me? A toxic friendship could be a variety of things. It could be a friend that they only want to complain about their bullshit to you. You can never complain to, your, to them about your bullshit, right? 
Um, even if you don't feel comfortable talking about your bullshit, or when it, they be complaining, you be listening, but then when you start complaining, they start rolling their eyes and doing all this extra shit. Like, bitch, I be listening to your fuck shit. You can listen to mine type shit. You know what I'm saying? So, that's definitely one way people can be toxic. Then you got the friend that's kind of just always complaining, like, bitch, shut the fuck up. Like, respectfully, like, we, we shouldn't be able to, you shouldn't be able to only talk about bad things all the time. Sometimes you should be able to talk about good things. Like, all they want to do is complain, complain, complain about their life, their work, their job. Like, did that's where bound you, well, we'll, we'll, we'll seep into it. I'm just going to talk about things that could be considered toxic. Um... This is for some, maybe if you're younger, even older, whenever you're around them, they always in some trouble. They can get you in some, some trouble, bitch. Like, they just always doing ghetto shenanigans. Like, it, when, once you get older, you can't be having ghetto shenanigans, friends. Let's be honest. You can't. You just can't. You can't. If you want to, unless you give it up like that, then yeah, like, stick with your, you know, birds of a feather flock together type shit. But after a while, the ghetto shit get old. I, I, I can't bang with you. Perfect. Not every day, at least. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Um, what else is toxic? Just people who just... And some people have these issues. People who just nasty to you. Like, it's really... It's still a market for that. It's just it's really a market for people who are friends with people... Who are really good friends with people who don't really fuck with them. They really nasty to them. They use them. They financially abuse them. They um are verbally disgusting to them. There is still a market for that at this big ass motherfucking age, bitch. Like, for real. Like, be very aware. Especially the um financial one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a big market for that. Because you gotta remember, it's still niggas out here that's like... 30, 40, that still don't got their shit together. So they need money at all costs. And if they got a friend who got money, they, they gonna ask them for money. All the fucking time. So it's definitely a big market for, you know, friendships. I think we always look at a lot of those things in relationships. There are financially abusive friendships, um, verbally abusive friendships. They're still very much out there. Um, people who just make you feel down. When you start talking about your good things and your accolades, they look jealous. They look upset. They seem angry. They don't want to talk about it. Like, how you don't support my good? Like, why you don't want to support my little whack-ass business? Even if it's whack. Like, support me. Hype me up. Gas me up, bitch. Like, for real. Respectfully. Like, that ass. Like, um, what else? People who just, they not there when you need them, you know? That's a big one. People who's not there when you really, really need them. Um, that one is, is, is uh, I was going to say picky. Picky, not picky, like, that one is uh, sticky. Is it? I don't know. It depends because some people got friends, you know, that'll be there for them through the thick and thin. I know for me. I'll, if somebody if somebody call me and they need me, I'm probably gonna be there because that's crazy. Like, how you need me? Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck? You actually need me? Like, I'm gonna have to probably even stop what I'm doing and then go to that because unless I'm like really far away, but I would go because um I don't know. I just feel like if somebody calls me or texts me and like. Oh, Brittany, I really need you to do da da Like, I'm going to be scared, bitch. Like, I don't want nothing on my... And also, I don't want nothing on my head. Like, you feel me? Like, fuck, I should have got up and I should have been there for this person. This could have happened. This, 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 this could have happened. So, that's just me. If you're watching this, don't get carried the fucking way, though. Also, yeah, how do you know when people get carried away? Like, when somebody always needs you to come pick them up. I'm right. Like, what if they're a person that's dead ass always in some shit? Like... They always in some shit. It can't be dangerous situations. Like, if somebody call me like, "Oh, Brittany, I I need you to come pick me up. I just got I, I just got shot." Like, uh, you need to call the ambulance. Like, I'm talking about situations where like, I don't know. Okay, this this might be a, this never happened. I can't relate. I just thinking about it. Like, let's say my friend went to some guy's house and they're like, "Oh my gosh, Brittany, I need you to pick me up." 
this guy he's crazy he just pissed me off or like I'm lost I don't have no money like I understand that you're like oh niggas is 29 they shouldn't be out and don't have no money but shit be happening like oh I lost my wallet and now I'm stranded and da 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 and it's like and that's the other thing is like what if you are a married with kids and you got a friend that be in situations like that it's like bitch we grown as fuck how you land in a situation where you lost your fucking wallet and you stuck in some nigga house so it's like it's a weird it's very weird it's very very weird it's very weird but i've been in situations where something crazy has happened and um it was very but it was like medical medically uh a medical issue and you know me i'm the type of person i just keep things you know I, I keep a little things in my pocket i remember everything see that's why i ain't shit sometimes you know we all ain't shit a little bit i ain't the best of friends i be keeping I, I hold grudges that's a scorpio trait i don't like to get too caught up in horoscopes but that's a scorpio trait you know i i hold grudges i remember shit I've tried to forgive. I, I forgive. I think I'm a forgiver. But I don't forget. And I feel like not forgetting is grudgy-ish. So I don't forget shit. You feel me? And I'm going to hold you to some shit you did. Yep. That's how I am. And people do too. We all do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a dead ass. If it's something big, I'm going to hold you to it. But not little shit. Like, some of y'all be ODing. Like, y'all be holding people to dumb shit. Like... I don't know. I can't think of something, but some of y'all just be just be just be mad about little stupid shit. But um, these are you know little things that are toxic. Um, and when do you know to end a friendship? I think I did a video like this before, like before I was ever Brit says. I would love to watch that video and then watch this video. But anyway, um, when do you know a friendship is just over? It's just like y'all can't. I don't want to say y'all can't relate. But if there are any of those things I just stated, number one, the friendship is probably over. But sometimes friends just naturally disintegrate. It hurt, it hurt, it hurts my heart sometimes to think about that. Like not recently, like I don't have those type of friendships. But I do. I'm. That's why I'm so anxiety driven because I do get nervous about like losing friends and stuff like that. Not like tragically. I mean like just literally like damn what if we don't really have a friendship anymore or especially with the pandemic because we don't get to hang out all of us don't get to hang out as much and because some people have different lives and stuff like that i do get mad worried out worried about not like not mad worried but i do get worried about stuff like that like damn what if i don't got no fucking friends no more because like my life is different now but what, who's to say what it'll be like later you know what I'm saying? It's just like, damn, what if I lose all my friendships now? And then when I need a friend, they won't want to be there for me. So I'm very weird like that. Um, but you got to know when a friendship is over or whatever the case may be. And um, and some of us, we drag on friendships for too long. I was watching, believe it or not, the Girl I Guess podcast. Um, and they had the hood heel on it. And she said something like, a lot of us hold on to friendships that give us anxiety. And that's a fact. Like, I feel like, especially now, if you like my age and you got friendships that you have for mad long, realistically, it's going to be really hard to leave those friendships behind. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's hard for you to just walk away from them because it's so long. It's the same thing as walking away from a relationship that you've been in for a very long time like people will be really sleeping on friendships um and it's hard but you gotta know when to walk away and when to just stop like and that's the good thing it's the good and the bad thing about friendship like i said like with family you can't leave your family behind that's just my opinion i don't think you can ever really stop fucking with your family they can, they ain't going nowhere even when you really stop fucking with them you can't really stop fucking with them like they dead ass your family but friends you can really genuinely stop fucking with them like you could literally have a friend today and never speak to them ever again and have no ties to them don't need to go no event where they might be at the event like you could literally end a friendship that's wild to me like but it's it's beautiful and bad like at the same time um you know um some people they don't have boundaries and, and whatever and you you gotta end those friendships and 
it is what it is it is what it is i know for some of y'all it's kind of hard too because you kind of used to hanging around that person all the time you grew up with that person it's like you think to yourself like what would my life be without them like i can't stop fucking with them like their life might get fucked up if i stop fucking with them it's like their life is not gonna get fucked up if you stop fucking with them because you're no bigger than god like i used to be like that i used to be like oh if i stop doing this and that that everything's gonna go f get go into shambles like bitch you don't you don't control nothing. You just you you just break me like. But um yeah, I had the end friendships. People keep doing the same thing over and over again. Motherfuckers don't be thinking. Allegedly niggas don't think. Um people just could drain you. Make you feel uneasy when you around them for whatever reason. And you got to end that friendship. And I know some of y'all too. I want to talk about this because I always worry about these type of things. Um, do some of y'all like end friendships because the person is not as available as they used to be? Is that naturally ending though? I feel like you know why I'm saying this because I'm so worried because sometimes I stop talking to people and it don't be personal. It's just that I be having a lot of shit going on. And I, I'm one of those people who dead ass respect that. Like I have friends. I swear to everything I love. Like, yo, even they'll tell me straight up, like, yo, Britt, I'm sorry, I didn't hit you up in mad long. I've been going through some things. And I dead ass respect that shit. Because I know what it's like. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck if you stop talking to me for two months and you come back into my life. You stop talking to me five months. And you come back in my life and you just like, yo, I just been going through some shit. And I'm just like, girl, I know. <laughs> I bet. Well, not I bet, but like. Okay, I respect it. If, if I really don't think I did anything bad to you or... And also, I respect too if you just want to stop fucking with me. Okay, hey. Can't have it all, baby. I mean, we could talk about it, you know. If I want to learn from anything, I haven't experienced that yet. But if I... Me, I think at this... The me that I am now, if somebody stop fucking with me... And I don't have a real reason as to why they stop fucking with me. I probably gonna want to know. And I'm gonna be like, you know, did I do anything to hurt you or upset you? I think a lot of times too, when people ask those questions, they know they did something. Because I never... But then I feel like I'm being like very toxic by saying that. Because I was like, I never felt like I ever did something bad to a friend. But then I could be one of those people who ain't shit and don't know no, don't know no fucking better. So, I don't ever want to be that person either who like doesn't know any better. Um... It's weird. That's why friendships is stressful. We don't got to make them stressful. I feel like my well, all my friendships right now are very, uh, very low stress level. And I don't know if that's because of the pandemic. Because even like I was saying the other day, like, I rarely, like, I was talking to, I don't know, my cousin or maybe a friend. I was just like, nobody called me out on nothing lately. That's one because I don't work, right? Work, motherfuckers be calling you out on shit all the time. And that's why I was so big on calling motherfuckers out on their bullshit. Because I be telling, that was my favorite line. People be telling me about myself. So I would tell motherfuckers about they self. I haven't been told about myself for so long. Because I stay out of people's way. Like, I literally be in my house. I do my motherfucking podcast. I'm on my business. So I haven't been told anything about myself. I literally... I know I say this shit all the time. People be like, what you doing? I be like, minding my business, staying out of trouble. I literally am staying out of trouble. And it's like kind of concerning because like, I feel like those are the things that make you grow as a person. Like, nobody has called me out with no bullshit lately because I don't be around motherfuckers to do no bullshit. Like, I can't, I, I rarely do it. And I also feel like too, I do, I personally feel like I'm a better person. I think I'm growing every day. And when I'm around people, I am very progressive. Um, but I also like to be mindful of me saying that because I've, I've heard people say that. And I'd be like, girl, you ain't grown not one cent. So I'm like, damn, shit, maybe I ain't grown either. You feel me? But I do think it's, like, very funny that um, <laughs> I'm rarely around people. So I rarely get called out on things anymore. I rarely get into fallouts with friends and stuff anymore. Like, ever. Like, where I'm like, oh, this bitch piss. Like, people barely piss me off these days. Like, for real. Like, but you can't live your life like that. You know what I'm saying? But I also have boundaries now, I guess. You know? I have those type of boundaries with people. So. Because. And people know, like, let me leave her alone. Because she gonna do some shit. She done been through some shit. <laughs> 
So I think people too also feel the need to leave me alone. And that's fucked up. Like, why y'all gotta leave people alone only when they went through some shit? So if you feel like somebody good and happy, you wanna stress them the fuck out? Like, come on, knock it off. But, yeah, I don't know. It's just it's scary out here. You know, um... You know, building friendships but i feel like building friendships are easy leaving them are hard you know um just know your boundaries know when it's just something where you can communicate to that person and know when it's something where the friendship is really really over i never really had to end friendships i only did that once like i'm trying to think most friendships that I no longer have is just naturally disintegrated and I don't think it's because we did anything back to each other. It's just we just outgrown each other. Like I'm thinking of like middle school, high school. I wouldn't even say we not friends. We just we still friends. Like I'll be like, Oh, you're look cute. Like I don't know. But um I've only had I've I'm trying to be honest and truthful right now. One one friendship where I had to end it, you know. Um, yeah, so I don't feel, I don't know, I don't run into those issues, I don't want to, I don't, uh, you know, if it happens, it happens, you know, I hope it's never because I did something bad to anyone, and if I did, I hope we can have a conversation about it, and if that person still doesn't want to be my friend, I'm open to that too, not like open to it, but I respect, respect that, um, but yeah, I've only had one full night with a friend, I just felt like she just... You know, if you watch it, you listen, y'all probably know what to talk about. But we just always get into it. And I just feel like I don't do that with none of my friends. Like, we be getting into it. Like, I don't know. We just always get into it. And it's, it's some people, they just don't change. You know, I know some people, they not going to work. And when you doing the work, too, like, one thing about me, now that I, like, go to therapy, I'm focused on myself and trying to heal and do work, you dead ass notice when people not doing the work and why it's so important for people to go get help and do work and and whether it's you journaling whether you have a strong getting the support system and professional help because some niggas actually be needing professional help like a lot of y'all be just relying on your friends it's it's, it's a group it's, it is a market for motherfuckers that could just have friends as a support system but it's a huge market of motherfuckers that need therapy like you need professional motherfucking help like, you cannot come to your friends and family for help. You need professional help. Like, dead ass. And, um, it's just been making me learn, like, now that I'm doing the work. People really, like, people I know that been through some shit before, prior to me, really just been out here in the streets, just roaming life, straight the fuck up, like, hey... And never went to therapy a day in their goddamn life. Don't plan on going. You know, don't do no work. Don't be trying to motherfucking heal. And I'm just like, well, bitch. These are people I can't be around. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's some people I'm like, yo, they've been through some shit. Like, if you, especially if you got a friend you know for mad long, you're know, like, damn, they've been through some shit. And they dead ass just be functioning, just living life. And I have a problem with that. Um, but yeah, anyway, <laughs> I don't get to, of course, but, um, yeah, it's some people, you know, well, somebody, you know, I just had to just, to just fall back, not fall back, just end the friendship and it's okay. And, and in the beginning it seems hard, but it's really easy and your life is normal. I think that's the other thing too, is like, we feel like our life is going to be so boring or it's going to change completely. Like, we'll never find somebody compatible as them. And maybe you don't even need a, another friend like them. You don't need somebody you need to be super duper compatible with. Like, your life is going to be fine. Honestly, when I started, like, doing my clips, like, ending friendships, ending bad people I was in relationships, setting boundaries... Things started getting better for me, to be honest. Like, dead ass. And the funny thing is, I noticed that too. With this person, like, when people would leave them, things would get better with them. And I'm just like, bitch, what the fuck is that? Like, that's just me. That's something I noticed. So, I do think, feel like things got better with me. Um, personally, when I, when I end things that's toxic... And some of y'all want to see the the big picture when you leave somebody. How you want to see it in the moment? You it could be even something so minuscule like how you're more focused on yourself, right? How 
you are more consistent with your business those are small those are not even small things those are big things but those are things you might not even notice like damn after i took this person out i'm way better with my business or i'm way better at communicating or i'm way better with me or i cook dinner every day now or i eat healthier now or i save way more money like and yeah, at some point you gotta hold yourself accountable because you made those choices. But now you held yourself accountable, you cut that person out of your life, and now you're a better person. So, you know. Those are other things too. Y'all you gotta pay attention to everything when it comes to friendships and shit. Like, what what like how is this person impacting you? Like for real. And it's hard to do that. Especially when you've been friends with somebody for really long. Like, like how is it really, really impacting you? Like for real. So I don't know. I hope this episode was good because I feel like I was like a little bit rambly. But, um, yeah, you know. It is what it is, you know. Choose your friends wisely. Um, set your boundaries. Maybe you don't want to cut off all your friends or cut off, well, not cut off all your friends. Cut off a friend. Just set those boundaries. And if those people don't want those, those boundaries, then, you know, people say just cut them off completely. You know, set your boundaries. And some people might not want those boundaries set. They like, look, this is how we usually are. This is what I want to do. And if they don't want to respect that, then you got to just clip, 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 and it is what it is. So yeah, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, subscribe button. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, underscore Instagram. And what else, what else, what else, what else, what else? Oh, make sure you comment leave a five stars and a review if you are streaming and yeah when will i see you i will see you guys when next week bye